Hey guys, Scarlet Darkwood here. Hope everyone's had a great week. I know I have. I just got back from vacation in the magical city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And I must say, I absolutely love, love that city. Absolutely love it. I had a magical connection to it the first time I went with my spouse two years ago. I actually went when I was younger. When I was in my late 20s, I went to a medical conference, but there was no time to really connect or see anything. I was just outside the French Quarter uh, at the Fremont Hotel, which is now the Waldorf, I think, and I didn't have a chance to connect. But these last two times, I really did get a chance to walk the quarter, walk through all the streets, and just absolutely just immerse myself into everything, and I love that place. So while I was there, I decided to take advantage of uh, going into certain, um, I guess you should say, hoodoo or voodoo shops. I went to your typical uh, shops the last time. Well, I went into Marie Laveau's uh, House of Hoodoo or House of Voodoo. I went into Reverend Zombies. I went into Voodoo Authentica. They were okay. I didn't get anything there. Um, so to me they looked very similar even voodoo authentica which i think is supposed to be more of the more authentic uh voodoo especially the practitioners who work there they practice more of the traditional hoodoo I, i'm not into conjure uh, though i like some of the elements of it but i don't really practice conjure but i decided to go ahead and check out some shops and our first stop was in the garden district and i stopped in at house of hoodoo and i'll leave a link below and it is in a beautiful old house uh, it was a fun shop charming the ambiance everything was great i liked it and i got a lot of things there and later that night I was at Jackson Square and walked down to Cater Street and went into Hex, Old Time Witchery, and I got some things there that I enjoyed. as a great shop. So if you're ever in New Orleans, go check these two places out for sure. Uh, you will find some great things you can use for your practice. And uh, what I want to do is I want to show you the items that I got because I think they're fun and I hope that you will enjoy them as well. So come join me on my little shopping spree. I'll show you what I got. Okay, now on to what I got at the House of Voodoo. And I'm going to start out by showing you the hagstones. These are a lot of fun. These are stones you can find near rivers, uh, oceans, that type of thing where water is. They're used to ward off evil, protect against hexes, curses, illness, nightmares. They've been used over doorways and windows to have access to other spiritual and other liminal places. And you can take these and string them up and make a necklace out of it or some kind of hanging talisman if you would like. They're a lot of fun and I'd like to make something with mine. The next is a vial of golden flakes. Not the cereal, but gold flakes. Maybe you can see that here. Yeah. And gold is a metal that is associated with personal growth, financial success. You can add those little sprinkles to an oil candle if you wish, maybe to your dressed candles, your oils, use it in a ritual bath, or if you do practice true conjure, you can put it in a gris gris bag if you would like. I thought that was kind of neat to have, so I got that. The next is copper flakes. And right here. And copper, let me set that there. Copper is actually used for luck and healing. It transfers frequencies from non-physical to physical. It enhances other metals like the gold and the silver. And it's used in healing, luck, purification, and it's also an antibacterial agent too. Like I have a copper sink in my home, so it's a great antibacterial, keeps things a lot cleaner. The next is the silver flakes right here. And that is a metal that is used reflect back energy. It's used for protection, reversal. It reflects the energy back to where it came. 
and you can restore balance and stability with that metal too. So as you can see, you can open, open these little tops here and sprinkle that into your bag, your bath water, your conditional oil, anything like that. And next we have High John the Conqueror root. I got several of these. High John the Conqueror is used in a lot of Mojo or Grigri bags and sometimes it's anointed with some whiskey. It's used um, to work with um, Africans, used it to work with their ancestors and when the slaves came they used High John the Conqueror root uh, in their bags for protection, prosperity, luck. Uh, power triumph because they were trying to work their way to freedom a lot of them who used the Underground Railroad and so um, in one of the courses I took at Hexfest they uh, one of the classes was on how to make a mojo bag using High John the Conqueror root and so when I was at House of Hoodoo I decided to get me some of that just in case I ever do use it for something like that I'll have it the other thing I got was Florida water and Florida water is used for cleaning protection prosperity luck and if you from it comes from Haitian voodoo and it's a staple ingredient when practicing that um, just FYI the other thing I got were some what they call lucky mojo beans I thought those were neat and those are used to make wishes come true. You can use it as a talisman to carry with you. It's to create luck. It's to help you get whatever you want. And I thought these were neat. You can put it in a bag, um, carry it in your pocket, purse, whatever you would like to do. And the next thing I got I thought was very interesting is a stone called lodestone and I'm going to try to get this out here and this is a magnetic iron ore you find it in nature uh, it's uh, occurring in nature as magnetic it's an iron ore that's mag magnetic it is used typically to draw in money but it can be used to attract to draw in anything that you desire it's a dr stone for drawing in so I thought that would be kind of neat to have so I picked up a piece of lodestone and I got a skeleton key at, uh, again, this is House of Hoodoo. And skeleton keys are really kind of cool. Apparently the witch's box had um, a skeleton key box. And the key is used for protection. It can signify the means to uh, open all doors and places that are locked off or that are behind a barrier of some kind. And that refers to liminal and unseen realms, the spirit realms. It also represents uh, the knowledge, access. It's like holding the key to knowledge or a key to access information. And it also locks doors as well. So it can also signify setting boundaries. Um, you know, if you want to lock off something or close off something, you, you would use this to signify that. Last but not least, we have nail, coffin nails. I don't know if you all can see that, but um, coffin nails are used to uh, practice baneful rituals or, or malice in your rituals. It can cause sickness, breakups, it can bind someone or it can nail them down. The sharp end of the nail can signify cutting off or severing something. So usually when you're using coffin nails, it's usually for something uh, a little bit um, darker I think um, and usually people will cross them if they want to sometimes you're using a certain number of nails I just picked up a couple to to you know if I ever decided to use it I would do that so anyway that's what I got at the house of hoodoo I will leave the link below and if you're ever in New Orleans go check the store out it's absolutely wonderful and next, I'm going to show you what I got from Hex Old World Witchery that's on Decatur Street in um, the French Quarter. It's uh, near Jackson Square. The first thing I got was this little cauldron. I just thought that was kind of neat. It's a little mini cauldron. You can put charcoal in it. 
if you would like or anything you would want for your altar that's going to be really cute i'm thinking about giving it to someone who is interested in moon magic and they can do their little moon incense things on that i got a lot of incenses at uh, hex I, I was enamored with the incense um, that they had not only ones you see that you could pick up in as sticks and cones but they had these special formulations and I thought this was neat, the St. Michael's incense. I thought I like Archangel Michael a lot, so I got that to use for my rituals with him. The next one here is a bromelain. Um, I just thought that was kind of interesting too, a bromelain. I haven't used that, haven't heard of it much. Um, let's see it's um it's frankincense storax and aloes wood it's uh sacred magic of a bromel and the mage that's what that is the next one i have is dark moon that's what i'm going to give to my, my special person here i thought that was pretty neat too it's um it it's used for rituals occurring during the dark moon. If you all are familiar with moon magic, there's the time when the moon is dark. You don't see it anywhere. And so there's good to practice magic with that too. There's certain things that you can do during that phase. The other one is divination. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, thought that was really neat. And that is an incense to promote psychic powers and empower divination. And scrying. And next is Luna. That's another another one that I may give to my person who's wanting to practice moon magic. Um, that's used for involving dreams, divination, and development of psychic powers too. A lot of times with moon magic you're dealing with dreams, intuition, astral travel, that type of thing. So that would be great to use for that. And that's it for Hex Old World Witchery. I hope that you check that store out. I'll leave a link to that store below. And thanks for joining me and letting me show you what I got on my shopping spree.